G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, in an earlier video you would have seen where I did up a, a drill press, a bench drill for my brother-in-law, a cheap one. And I gave him a chuck key for it because the chuck key was missing for the Jacob's chuck. And this is the chuck key. It's one I picked up in another job lot. And uh, it looks like the, the little cross piece has been lost. And uh, they're normally just a press in fit on these Jacob's. And somebody had made up this really bodgy one which went through, uh, which I've just cut through with the, with the air gr die grinder, taken it out, and I'm going to replace it. I mean, it sort of worked, but it wasn't really quite long enough. They really want it to be longer so you get a good grip on them. And, uh, I mean, the way they flatten the end out to stop it sliding out isn't a bad idea. I might do the same thing when I finish. So today's project is I'm going to uh, machine up a, a new little crossbar to go through there. And uh, by estimation, it looks like it's 6 mil. And, uh, well, I haven't got any 6 mil rod, and it'll have to be hard. We can't, we can't really use mild steel on it. So I'll, uh, I'll have to get something that's a little bit tougher than a lot of the steel that rod that you have lying around. And uh, I'll look in my scrap bin, and we'll see what we can find. Well, here's a shot under one of my benches showing some of the scrap rod um, that I've got for small jobs and uh, I just chuck it all under the bench there's a, probably a, <laughs> a good ton of steel scrap under there I keep it all and you can see there's all sorts there so what are we going to use for this well as the title says we're going to use some rebar and in that tin in that honey tin you can see on the left there's a piece of rebar rod and uh, some scrap rebar and I'm going to use that so waste not what not I've got a ton of this stuff this heavy rebar up the side of the shed I picked up somewhere and if you ever work with rebar you know it's pretty hard to bend this stuff it's pretty tough and uh, if you look up rebar on the internet you'll find out it comes in oh, half a dozen different hardness levels what hardness this is, I have no idea. Uh, I know it's pretty hard because I have cut it and worked it before. And it's funny because, I mean, I, you look in some of these forums and uh, these metal work groups and people occasionally bring up the subject of rebar and 90% of them say, oh no, rebar, oh no, don't touch that stuff, can't work that. Well, I've found it's, <laughs> it's okay. I've worked it plenty of times and never had a problem. Um, maybe my grade's a good grade, I don't know. Uh, you have to take your time with it because obviously you're going to have to take off the uh, the outer surface and you don't want to go, which is pretty irregular, and you don't want to go damaging your, uh, your cutters and that. So uh, uh, I generally rough it off and uh, and then work it back. So uh, that's what we'll do and uh, I'll show you how I do it. I'm spinning at 620 RPM. Just going a bit light to begin with. You don't want to go in too deep, otherwise the uh, irregularities could break your carbide cutter. Once you get it down, well then you're right. Now that was on medium feed, and that finishes all right. Well, it's not a finishing, hasn't been a finishing cut, but it's, uh, you know, it's machining up all right. So uh, we do the, face uh, off the end, and we'll uh, spin it around and do the other end. Thank you. 
before I do the other end, I'll centre ball this. Just uh, drill it so I can take a, uh, a large centre. do this you always go in right to the, the shoulder and no deeper okay so we'll do the other end and then we'll uh, We'll uh, reduce the uh, the whole thing to six mil. With this sort of job, it's a good idea to lock down the cross slide if you've got a cross slide lock. These are easy to make. There's a video uh, in my collection that shows you how to put a simple cross slide lock on. Only with the uh, you know machining something as irregular as this, you're going to get a lot of a lot of uh, cross slide shutter otherwise, and uh, it'll help give you a better finish. All right, we'll get on with it. Once you get that scaly outer off and uh, smooth things out a bit, the machine's all right. Okay, we're going a bit heavier again. Once again, we're still on the medium feed. Well, it's looking better than it did originally. Okay, it's not high grade machine steel, but we'll make it work and finish it off with a decent cutter. With this sort of crappy steel, sometimes if you machine away from the chuck, um, leave the cutter as it is, it can actually give a better finish, so we'll, we'll reverse that the feed and we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Well, there you go. She's uh, turned out pretty right. I mean, it's not machine grade steel by any stretch, but finish is reasonable, not too bad. And uh, now I'll just heat up the end and just flatten it the same as I've done it on that. And that'll stop the little bar from sliding out across piece. And job's done. And that'll be just a nice, good size to grip, you know. A lot of them are too short, but uh, Jacob's ones are generally pretty good. So I'll just heat the end and flatten it and job done.
Okay, job done. All finished. So the Jacob's chuck key is uh, a lot better than it was before with that crummy little crossbar in it. And being rebar, it's good hard stuff, hard to bend. Certainly a lot stronger than mild steel. The finish is reasonable. I mean, it's never going to be as good as proper machine grade steel, but you can get it pretty good. And uh, certainly for jobs like this, well, why waste your uh, your good steel when this will do the job? Okay, so don't be afraid to have a play with a, with a bit of rebar. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.